Think about what we've done for this problem. We started out by seeing denominators that were not the same, so we do our work to find the LCD. Next part is taking each of our original fractions and multiplying to top and bottom to get our LCD in the denominator. And how do we finish up now that we do have fractions that have the same denominator? We're real close. We're, we're at the finish line, basically. Our denominator is going to be the same, 12x squared, and we combine like terms in the numerators. There's a 3x squared with no other x squared terms. There's a positive 6x with negative 12x gives us that negative 6x, okay, combining those like terms, and then positive 4 with no other constants. There's our positive 4 in the answer. So now, can we simplify? Simplify for us means factor, then cancel. So I actually have to sit down and think for a second, can I factor that numerator? What I would recommend at this point is to just attempt to factor it. And this sort of a trinomial that starts, that has a leading coefficient that's not 1, that would be the kind where I'd multiply first and third to get a, a, a 12. Then I look for, is there another pair of numbers that multiplied together will equal positive 12, and added together will equal negative 6. And, and none of my pairs will work. Even if I listed both negatives, none of these pairs would add up to negative 6. So that's how I can determine that that numerator cannot be factored so it cannot be canceled, and that's our final answer. Now, here's an example for you to try. So pause the video, work through this problem, remember what our main steps through these problems are, and then come back and we'll look through the answer together. My first move in this problem is noticing that our denominators do not match. We need to find the LCM. The first denominator, 9x, I have factored as 3 times 3 times x. The second denominator, 6x, factored is 2 times 3 times x. Building the LCD, we'll need 1, 2. We'll need two 3s, because this list does have two 3s. And we will need just 1x. This list has 1x, this list has 1x, so we only need 1x, and, and multiplied together would give us 18x. If your coefficient was something higher, like 36 or 54, it means you didn't break down all the way into prime factors. And I would be very cautious about that because there are some problems where if we make our LCD too large, we can't get to a simplified answer. It's just a good habit, a good practice to make our LCD proper, meaning as low as possible, the lowest common denominator. So things like 36x squared would be a common denominator, but it would not be the lowest, and it would be something we would want to avoid. 18x, I say, is the only kind of denominator we should be choosing to use for this problem. So I've made some space, took that first fraction, 3x plus 1 over 9x, and spotted that it needs a times 2 to the denominator to get it from 9x to our LCD, 18x. And if it's a 2 on the bottom, it's times 2 on the top. It will have to be distributed, 3x plus 1, two terms. So distributing that 2 leads us to 6x plus 2 over 18x. Looks good. We have our LCD. We'll move on to the next one, 2x minus 1 over 6x. Now, I'm starting to get used to this idea about being cautious with distributing, so much so that it's a good strategy to bring it down with parentheses there. That will keep me on track so that when I spot that this one needs a times 3, it's set up to remind me that this is a distribute. A number times a set of parentheses means multiply that number to every term inside the parentheses. Leads us to the 6x minus 3 over 18x. Okay, getting to the finish line. Our denominators are the same. So right away, we're putting our two fractions together into a single fraction with that LCD, the 18x in the denominator. We combine the like terms in the numerator. 6x with 6x is 12x. Positive 2 with negative 3, negative 1. Okay, don't think about canceling yet. Think about factor first. Any sort of canceling you might want to do with the x's or that 12 over 18 would be incorrect. Our numerator is two terms. That means either we need to be able to 
cancel from every term we have on top or that we would have to find a GCF first. And I just, what works for me is I think factor first. I don't try anything right away. I factor first. If there was a GCF, then maybe I could cancel. But there's no GCF, so there's no factor and no cancel. And that is our final answer. We cannot simplify it in any way. Let's look through some more examples. These problems can definitely get a little bit raunchy, so we want to go through as a few more examples to get these things feeling smooth. What are the things that we see about this problem? We have two fractions. We're aiming to do a subtract, so we know we will need a common denominator. But there's also something we want to think about doing when there's a subtract. I like to flip the signs back here, that 4, from positive to negative, and then change that subtract to an add. It's not required that we make that move first. It's, just, it's a move we could do later on in the problem, but I like to do it as soon as I see it's, it's a subtract to flip signs and add. I might not always see it right away at the beginning, but it's something that I definitely don't want to forget. What's next? Let's find the common denominator. Each denominator will factor, so x squared plus 2x plus 1. This is a nice trinomial pair of numbers that multiplied equals positive 1 added together positive 2. So that's an x plus 1 times x plus 1, or x plus 1 squared. How about this denominator? We can't factor that further, so I'll just write it in parentheses. I know it's going to be a binomial factor. There's no GCF, but two or more terms, I want to throw them in parentheses to start to see them as this unbreakable block. Not like an x and a 1, but like they are joined together x plus 1. And a little scratch out, just so I don't get confused and try to go back to those two. Once I have my denominators factored, I'll keep them factored for the rest of the problem. I went over here to build the LCD, and x plus 1s are the only type of factors we see. And how many of these x plus 1 factors do we need? This denominator has 2, this denominator has 1. We go with where we see most. Over here we saw 2, so we need 2 in our LCD. There it is, x plus 1 to the second power. And if you like to write x plus 1 times x plus 1, perfect, no problem. If, if you wrote it out like that, totally cool. What's the next part? Let's make a little space and get our equivalent fractions. We need both of our fractions to have this LCD. Our first fraction had it. I wrote the x plus 1 times x plus 1 as x plus 1 squared, just so I could see it look identical to the LCD I have listed there. But bottom line about that first fraction is no change. We're not multiplying anything to this fraction. It already has the LCD. Moved on to this fraction, negative 4 over x plus 1. What's missing? What do I need to multiply to the denominator? It's missing that second x plus 1. We had 1, we need the second one. And we need to do same thing to top and bottom. The denominator, we don't want to multiply out. We don't want to do FOIL. We'll leave that x plus 1 times x plus 1 just as x plus 1 squared. But the numerators, we must always multiply, FOIL, distribute. We always do that with the numerators. Think about what our next move is. It's to combine some like terms. And we can combine like terms once everything is all multiplied out, not before. Okay? So definitely a major idea. This step is keep the denominator factored, multiply the numerator, always. So we said this was the fraction that needed no change. I'm just going to think about dragging it over here to combine with this fraction because now they both have our LCD, x plus 1 squared. I know that will show up in the answer. And then combine like terms. Positive x, positive 1x with negative 4x leaves negative 3x. And a negative 3 with negative 4 is negative 7. There isn't any factoring we could do. If you said, well, I might want to factor out a negative sign, that's that's a great move. Uh, in my experience, I've seen it left just like this is a pretty acceptable answer. I can understand if you would want to factor out a negative 1 because we see all negative terms up here, but not a required step in my book. I think that's a great place to leave it. There's no factoring that would lead to any canceling, so there is our final answer.